The Radiate HTN Solo study um, was a randomized trial that was intended to look at patients with mild to moderate hypertension and see if renal denervation was effective compared with a sham control. The study was designed as a one-to-one -one randomized trial. It was international, conducted in Europe and the United States. Uh, it enrolled 146 patients. It was blinded, sham controlled. The assessment of the endpoint was uh, blinded uh, to the assessors. Um, and patients were enrolled if they met blood pressure criteria and were on a, up to two medications for mild to moderate hypertension. They then underwent a four-week uh, screening period where medications were washed out, and if they still met the blood pressure criteria, they could then be randomized. And they were randomized either, either to renal denervation or a sham procedure, which was angiography alone. So both patient groups got a procedure, uh, and that was essential to the blinding. And the primary endpoint was two-month um, daytime ambulatory blood pressure that was assessed um, and reported um, in the primary publication. The uh, technology that was used was the um, was endovascular catheter-based ultrasound. And so this consists of a catheter that can be placed uh, via the femoral artery. Um, there is an ultrasound uh, that targets the depth of the artery where we believe the renal nerves run in the proximal and main renal arteries. It's at a depth of one to six millimeters. And in addition, there's a cooling balloon that protects the um, endothelial surface from heating um, and it's delivered in seven second ablations um, across the length of the bilateral renal arteries in the main vessel. So the primary endpoint was met in the study. Um, it showed a significant reduction in the daytime ambulatory systolic blood pressure in the renal denervation group compared with the sham. So the renal denervation group saw an 8.5 millimeter reduction, and the sham uh, group showed about a two millimeter reduction. So there was a significant difference between the two um, at a p-value of less than 0 0.001, highly significant. So the spiral trial um, looked at a different device, um, not ultrasound-based, uh, but also catheter-based, in that case using um, a multi-electrode radiofrequency ablation technique. Um, and I think the remarkable thing is that even though the methods um, of energy delivery were different, um, that both programs showed significant reductions in blood pressure. The spiral trial that we recently saw was in patients on medication, so this was a different patient population. Um, and, uh, but both trials have shown reductions in blood pressure, whether measured by ambulatory or also office. And the reason office blood pressure matters is that we have uh, quite a bit of correlation uh, of reductions in office blood pressure being associated with improved cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Well, we thought that renal denervation was done when there was a large randomized trial that was negative, but these new studies suggest that there is really uh, an effect. Um, it's not the end of the road because these are small studies. They need to be followed for a longer duration, and we need to see more patients and understand the breadth of uh, which patients are most well suited uh, to the treatment. We know right now that immediately there are trials that are underway uh, for these two programs, um, looking at additional uh, patients to be enrolled um, in sham controlled studies uh, simply to augment the number of patients that we have under review so that we can better understand the durability and the safety. Um, and these are programs that are under review by the Food and Drug Administration. I think in the long run, we'll want to see even broader trials that uh, will help us define the clinical context where this might be used. Um, should this be an alternative to medications? Um, it may be a mechanism to uh, be able to avoid problems with, with adherence to medications, which is a, which is a real problem.